Good afternoon, this is Gavin coming all the way from South Africa. I want to share something from the Word of God with you. If you'll please open your Bibles with me to the book of 2 Peter chapter 2. The book of 2 Peter chapter 2. Let's read together. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. I want you to notice the characteristic of heresy or false doctrine. It is damnable. There is hellfire within heresy. If you preach heresy, there is a hellishness about it. It will damn your soul. To listen to some heretical false teacher is literally to put yourself in line and in conjunction with damnable heresies. We have to know the Word of God in these days in which we live. Notice the Holy Spirit uses the term damnable heresies. There's damnation in it. The Puritan divine Thomas Watson said that you can go to hell for preaching false doctrine for as much as you can go to hell for adultery or homosexuality. Heresy is nothing to toy with. Well, let's go and look at the next words that the Holy Spirit uses in this verse. Even denying the Lord that bought them. In other words, they have a twisted view of the cross of Calvary. The cross of Calvary is not just to save you from your sins and in, in a general way to wash you in the blood. Yes, the Bible does say that you are redeemed not with perishable things such as silver and gold from your feudal way of conduct inherited by the tradition of your forefathers. Fathers, but you have been redeemed with the precious lifeblood of Christ. What that literally means is this. It's not in a general way. It is a literal transaction that has taken place. You have been washed inwardly. You have been washed outwardly. You have become the exclusive property of Jesus Christ, in whom, Ephesians 1, 7 says, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. You've been brought out of a marketplace of slavery unto the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been brought out from that market to become the exclusive property of Jesus Christ. The blood of Christ has washed you. There's been a cleansing that has taken place. There's been an effic efficaciousness of cleansing that has taken place through his blood. After he had by himself, the book of Hebrews says, purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now this is what it means. They will deny the Lord that bought them. In other words, they will deny a fundamental doctrine concerning the Lordship of Christ. When I come to teach you and speak about the Lordship of Christ, I'm teaching a absolute essential to Christianity. The Bible talks about this. Let's turn over to the book of Romans chapter 10, reading from verses 9 and 10. This is a very, very important scripture, and we need to have a look at it. Romans chapter 10, reading from verses 9 and 10. Let's read it together. The Holy Spirit says that... Uh, in verses 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, God hath raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God hath raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I want to just quickly talk about that last term over there. Believing in your heart that God hath raised Jesus Christ from the dead. I want you to quickly turn with me to the book of Romans. The book of Romans chapter 1. All I'm doing is teaching you chapter and verse so you need to know these doctrines because these doctrines are of vital importance. It says over there in verses 3, it says, actually in verses 3, it says, as a, which was promised to fall by the prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. This is Jesus being incarnated in the flesh. Jesus was 100% man. And then it says, and was declared or demonstrated or determined to be the son of God with power according according to the spirit of holiness, that is a reference to the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, what is saying over here, when it says that if I believe that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead in my heart, I will be saved as much as my confession that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, to believe in my heart that God hath raised Jesus up from the dead is very, very important when I say this. Now, understand what I'm talking about. First of all, when you read the scripture, it says that Jesus was demonstrated, he was declared, he was determined definitely to be the Son of God. In other words, when I literally say that I believe that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, I am affirming Jesus's, not only his resurrection, but I am affirming his manhood, his godhood and manhood in one person, him being 100% God 
and 100% man. That is what I'm affirming. It is the affir affirmation of my faith that I believe that Jesus Christ is who he said he was. That he is not only man, but he is fully God. That he literally raised himself as much as the Father and the Holy Spirit up from the dead. There are references in the Bible to God the Father raising Jesus up from the dead. There are references in the Bible to God the Holy Ghost raising Jesus up from the dead. And there's also one reference in the book of John where Jesus said, destroy this temple in three days and I will raise it up. All three of the Godhead were involved in the resurrection. And I'm telling you, if Jesus had sinned, he could not have raised himself up from the dead. It was imperative that he kept himself pure. It was imperative, but as God, he literally raised himself in conjunction with the three mighty persons of the Trinity up from the dead, God the Son. It is a definite determination, it is a definite declaration that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. When I say I believe in Jesus Christ being raised from the dead, I am affirming his divinity and his manhood. I am saying, Lord Jesus, you are God and man. It is a declaration of the manhood and the godhood of the eternal son. It is a declaration that he has always existed before Abraham was, I am. It is a declaration that he is the creator, but he is incarnate in the form of flesh. It is a declaration of these mighty doctrines in these mighty epistles that the Holy Spirit literally speaks of over here. We have to understand these glorious doctrines. These glorious doctrines, my friend, are vitally important. It says, who was made of the seed of David according to his flesh and demonstrated to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We have so little understanding in the church today concerning doctrine. We have so little understanding concerning the word of God. These are our very foundations of our walks with God. It is the very foundation. Doctrine is the foundation. We have to be doctrinally sound. We have to be people that know the word of God. And in the last days, the Holy Spirit reveals, as in 2 Peter chapter 2, that these people will come and take you away from sound doctrine. It will take you away from the Word of God. Now turn with me please to the book of Colossians very quickly. The book of Colossians. These verses are vital. The book of Colossians please. The book of Colossians. I'm somehow in Philippians. I'll get to Colossians in a moment. Uh, it's after Philippians. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2, reading from verses 6. As ye therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith. I want you to notice that Paul himself was a lordship salvationist. That is the very first term I want to make. Now, lordship salvation, not in the sense of John MacArthur, but in the sense of having received Jesus Christ as Lord. As you have received Jesus Jesus Christ and the whole life. Now, you cannot divide Jesus Christ and his offices. You can't take Jesus as Savior without receiving him as Lord. You have to receive the full Christ. Jesus gave himself fully for your sins. The whole Christ died at Calvary, and we have to give ourselves to him as a full offering to God. What does the book of Romans say? Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, a completely consecrated sacrifice unto the Father. That's spirit, soul, and body. Now, Jesus, when he died for you and he shed his blood. He bought you and he bought you by his own blood. You are the exclusive property of Jesus. You belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are Jesus Christ's property. You exclusively his. You are washed inwardly. You are washed outwardly. The blood of the everlasting covenant has literally purged your sins. God has done something. But it says, as you have received the whole Christ Jesus, we receive the full Christ. We not only receive him as the one who died and rose again for us, according to the scriptures, and died for our sins, and had a bloody death, and literally was uh, wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. We receive the full Christ. You you see, we are to receive Jesus as Savior, but we are also are to receive him as Lord in his ascension. The ascension has to do with him having put all things under his feet. It is literally bringing all things in subjection to him. We've got to realize something concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. We have got to realize something. Turn with me to John 17, 3. I want to call your attention in this great high priestly prayer of something that Jesus actually said. Let's read it together. John chapter 17, reading from verses 3. The Holy Spirit quoting Jesus directly 
directly as he prayed this glorious great high priestly prayer before he was to sacrifice himself for our sins says the following he says as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him now as thou hast given him power over all flesh everything is going to literally be summed up in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ the whole of creation is going to be summed up in Jesus Christ yes there are certain prophetic events that are going to take place the rapture the, the, the coming of the Lord the Antichrist all this stuff is going to happen the pre-trib rapture all of this but all things are working together to be summed up in that day when every knee is going to bend and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord now there's a haphazard dealing that we have in the church today that people actually deal with Jesus in a very very haphazard manner they'll say Jesus I accept you as my Savior yes I want to escape hell yes I believe in your benefits I believe what you have supplied yes you are my righteousness Lord Jesus and receive and believe into the cross and believe that they have a lasting life but they literally have a problem with the idea concerning the Lordship of Christ Jesus turn with me now to the book of Acts Acts chapter 2 the book of Acts chapter 2 let's read together in Acts chapter 2 and the Holy Spirit says the following in the book of Acts chapter 2 Reading from verses 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made Jesus Lord. Now, remember what I said in the book of Romans chapter 1. I said Jesus was demonstrated or declared to be the Son of God. It is a declaration of his eternal sonship. Him being God and man, the eternal God-man, the one that is pre-existed and the one who incarnated in the flesh. I, that, that is what I said. He was made, he was declared or demonstrated now. God has made Jesus Lord. The Lordship of Christ is an essential doctrine because God has made him Lord. He is Lord of Lords and he is King of Kings. As the resurrection of Jesus Christ literally authenticates the, um, the and declares the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, the Godhood of the Eternal Son, as it literally uh, shows us the Godhood and determines that Godhood and literally shows us and demonstrates it by his divinity that he literally was who he said he was through his death and his burial and his resurrection. So the Lordship of Christ declares and demonstrates his Lordship. Actually, no, I, I put it wrong. The ascension demonstrates and declares and determines Jesus' Lordship. Everything is going to be put under his feet. Now, we have to submit to the Lordship of Christ. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, we are to walk in him, rooted and established in the faith and abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now, this has personal application to us in our lives. Turn with me, please, to the book of James, chapter 1 verses 22 a very well-known scripture but be you doers of the word now I'll read it to you in a moment as we get to the book of the epistle of James let's read it together please James chapter 1 reading from verses 22 James chapter 1 verses 22 and the Holy Spirit says but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves now we never bother looking at the 23rd verse but look at it it says but if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his face in a natural glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was now what James is doing here he is likening the word of God to a reflection in a mirror you wake up in the morning, you've got last night's breakfast all on your beard, you've got yesterday's cooties all around you, you've got crud in your eye, you've got all this kind of stuff that needs to be cleansed and cleaned. And you go to the mirror that day, you've got the soap available, you've got the rag available, or the face cloth that you need to use, and you look into the mirror and you see yourself as you are. It reveals, it reflects back to you how you are. This is what the Word of God does. It reflects back to you. It shows you as it is. It literally reveals your character, who you are. It shows you, it exposes you, so to speak, or it unveils who you are. It reveals who you are. Here you're sitting and you look at this particular thing and you see, oh, I've got a problem. I need to shave. I'm all unshaven. I'm unclean. My teeth is yellow. I need to, I've got plaque on my teeth. All this kind of thing. And you stand over there and you just look but it makes no impression upon you you don't do anything about it if you remember the Bible says faith without works is dead 
It's dead. We have a dead faith when we just have, oh, well, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Look in the mirror and don't get that stuff cleansed. Don't deal with those issues of sin. We have to go to the cross for cleansing. We have to go to the cross to, uh, to have identification and death. We have to have forgiveness of sins. We have to have it. We look into the mirror and we don't allow the Spirit of God to literally show us how we are. But what we do is we just haphazardly say, oh, well, I've seen what I look today and go off looking absolutely disgusting. Well, this is how some people are when they come to the Bible. They treat the Bible, oh, well, that's fine. The Bible shows me this particular thing, but they forget what kind of man they are. You see, the Word has not only the, the job to expose us, walking in the light of His Word. It needs to expose us. It needs to expose those areas in our lives which are not conducent with His will. It needs to expose us. There needs to be an unveiling of who we are. It reflects back to us what we are, what we do. That's what the Word of God does. And when we literally don't allow that Word to expose us. I love listening to David Wilkerson. David Wilkerson literally exposes me to the truth. He shows me by my position who I am. He uses the word of God. He uses the law of God. He literally reflects back and I see the position. I like those holiness preachers like Leonard Ravenhill or Paul Washer. They show me up for what I am. That is the true preaching of the word. The same is when I come to the Bible. I need to come with the attitude that God is speaking to me. When I come to the word of God, my friend, it is God talking to me. This is... <coughs> <clears throat> Beloved, this is Jesus Christ, my Lord, in print. And here he shows, he reflects that thing. And there's my reflection. But be ye doers of the word. Now, please understand me. There are three kinds of faith that the Bible talks about. The scriptures actually talks about it. It speaks about that kind of thing. Now, let me read verses 18 of chapter 2 of the book of James. Listen to this. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe, and they tremble. Oh, you say you believe there's a God, James says. Oh, you say you believe that there is a God, and that he reigns, and you believe in the triune Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Yes, you say you believe in the death, the burial, the resurrection of the eternal Son. Oh, yes, you say you believe in the ascension. Even the devils believe and tremble. There is such a thing as demonic faith. There is such a thing as a demonistic faith. Faith, something that is of the faith of devils. Todd Bentley, Alistair Crowley, uh, uh, all these guys in the charismatic movement, Rick Joyner, the whole emergent church movement, the apostate messianic movement, the wing, which is hyper, hyper messianicism, is a demonic faith that the Holy Spirit warns about. All false teaching is demonic. It is a demonic faith. Now, the Bible says even the devils believe. That's the first faith. There's that demonic faith that the Bible talks about. A demonic faith of mysticism and all this stuff. The whole emergent church, Rob Bell, is demonic. All these guys have a demonic faith. The Bible wants us to have a true faith, and it shows us what that truth faith is. It says over there, Thou believest that there is one God, do as thou doest well, for even the devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, faith without works is dead. True Bible faith always leads to action, to Bible faith. In other words, the man that is regenerated will always act upon the word. This is what he says in James 1.22. But be ye what? Doers of the word. What did Jesus say? If you continue in my word, so shall ye be my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word, if you allow the word of God to expose you, if you allow the word of God to deal with those issues, and every single one of us have got issues in our lives, every single one of us have got areas where we need to bring it under the Lordship of Christ and allow the Spirit of God to deal with us, every single one of us have got some sinful attitude that we need to ask the Holy Spirit to literally apply that word and literally make it real to us, every single one of us without exclusion. But we need to come under the Word of God. We need to come under the Lordship of Christ. And when we have a problem with that particular thing, when we come have a problem with His Lordship, we need to ask the question why. And there's a reason why. Because our heart is bent on backsliding, and many times there's a spirit of whoredoms that has attached itself to us. Turn with me to the book of Hosea, chapter 5. The book of Hosea, chapter 5. The book of Hosea, chapter 5. Let's read together. Father, I can't preach to save my life, but I ask that you apply something to this message and let the Spirit of God literally apply this teaching to the people. Let me find where the book of Hosea chapter 5 is. Ah, there it is. I've got it. Hosea chapter 5. <clears throat> it 
it says over there in the book of he, uh, 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 Hosea chapter 5. Now I've lost it again. Where is it? Praise you, Lord Jesus. For they will not turn and they will not frame their doings to turn unto their God in verses 4. For the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them and they have not known the Lord. Now that term in the Hebrew literally means, uh, frame literally means to repent. It means to adjust. It has the same correspondence to the word um, the bride has made herself ready in the book of Revelation chapter 19 when they stand and they go to the judgment seat of Christ and then after that they literally have made themselves. It means to adjust. There is something about the spirit of whoredoms when there is a harlotry spirit, when there is a spirit of harlotry that causes one to depart from the living God. Those people who are involved with that spirit of whoredoms do not like repentance preaching. They do not like coming under the Lordship of Christ preaching. They do not like the teaching of the Word of God concerning certain things. They don't like to come under. There is like this resistance to the teaching of the Lordship of Christ. Why? Because there's an area of sin in their lives that they don't want to give up. You see, they have this easy believism doctrine. Well, I just accept Jesus Christ and I accept Christ and that's the end of it and he has no requirements on my life. He has no requirements for him to do the work. It's not us doing the work. The whole of our salvation from beginning to end, right from the time that we get saved to the time that we go home to glory, to the perfecting of us as saints is of the Lord. Even that is of the Lord. When we resist the Spirit of God concerning certain issues, you see the Bible says the Holy Spirit that is in us in the book of James lusts to envy. He wants to deal with us. Oh, how we need to be searched. Remember what, what David prayed in the psalm. He said, search my heart, O God, and try me to see if there be any wicked thing search my heart O oh God search it you must allow the Spirit of God to search it God wants a transparent people what does first John 1 9 uh, before 1 9 8 say it says um, if we walk in the light as he is in the light how many born-again Christians listening to my words today are literally so to speak non-transparent we're not real we hide behind the mask we're a group of brief hypocrites oh and you ask them how they oh i'm so blessed but yet you've got these issues in your life you know you think you're so wonderful and yet you know and you put hide behind the mask no the lord uses the word to literally take that mask off we have to see ourselves as god sees us god literally exposes us god literally sees everything he takes the sharp two-edged sword even to divide asunder the soul and the spirit and the marrow and the joints god wants to deal with his people god wants to deal with every single one of us that listen to this message. God wants to deal with me. When I come to the Word of God, I must realize that God is speaking to me. He is saying something to Gavin Potter. He is saying something to me. This is Jesus talking to me. This is Jesus talking to you. This is talking to me. Everything he says, he's got something to say to me. He's saying something to me. There's something from heaven, the voice that spake from heaven. It's God speaking to me. It is the very record of the supernatural activity of God. It's God talking to me. God has spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. He's spoken unto us by Jesus Christ. He wants us to deal with something. He wants us to deal and have our lives come in line with his word. He wants absolute rule. The Holy Spirit that is in us lusts to envy. What is that thing that you're holding on to? What is that lust that you're holding on to? What is that hidden sin that is there, that secret sin that God himself wants to deal with you concerning? What is there? What is that thing that causes you to literally, so to speak, weigh down that you can't run the race that is set before you? What is that thing? Well, I want to tell you something, my friend. That thing is there. And the Spirit of God says, well, they will not frame their doings. They don't like the message of repentance. They don't like the message of coming under the Lordship of Christ. All repentance is, is coming under the Lordship of Christ. You see, it's not our work. It's not us perfecting it. What it is, you say, well, I come under. I repent. I turn away from this thing that is taking, uh, that is in my life. But I come under and the Lord Jesus Christ will do the perfecting of it. You submit. You submit. And he does the rest. You can't save yourself. You can't save yourself a fly, a fly from the head, a headache. It is his work. The whole of your salvation is his work. There's some of you that are battling with hidden sin. There are some of you that are battling with something in your life, something that comes in you between your relationship. We want real faith. We want real faith. A faith that is submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God. And my beloved, Jesus our Messiah, Jesus our Lord is everything, for he has put all things under his feet. 
Wonderful Jesus, I pray that if you can take this word and bless somebody with it and help them to walk in the paths of everlasting, try our hearts, O oh God, and try us to see whether there be any wicked thing and Lord Jesus, we love you today. We love you for what you have done for us through your death, your burial, and resurrection. Lord Jesus, you are Lord, and we desire after you. Amen and amen. God bless you.